this. I am like so thrilled that the way this all came out. And I was, I've been telling everybody else that the video adds like a whole nother level of the song to, to even me, like, mm -hmm. and in a way that I didn't expect. But I wanted to ask you, like, how did this all start for you? Like, how did this, um, I mean, I imagine you, like, even growing up were athlete and like, but what's your story and all that? Yeah, actually, I was not an athlete growing up. I was the opposite of that. Uh, I was very self-conscious. So I actually have a birth defect. So I've had my prosthesis since it was time for me to learn how to walk. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I was always taught to be like confident in who I am, but I always shied away from sports. Um, and when I moved to Nashville about six years ago, I kind of went through a somewhat of a transformation with that. Um, and I got a new prosthesis made and I was just encouraged to try new activities. So a friend told me about a boxing club um, and it was the first sport that I had tried that I could really adjust as I needed to, but feel like I could compete with myself and get better at something that I didn't think was possible. Yeah. Um, and so it started this whole journey for me. So boxing is a fun workout, but it, it represents so much more to me um, because I learned so much about myself and how much um, confidence really comes not from what I look like physically, but from how I carry myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in gaining confidence in, in boxing, um, I had a trainer who asked if I wanted to learn how to kick, which I didn't even think was possible with a prosthesis. And, and me undergoing the process of literally overcoming something that I, I thought was physically impossible made me want to try so much more. So now I do way more athletic activities and I'm willing to try things that I didn't think was possible before because I, I know that I can't overcome things uh, that I, I didn't see as something, an option. Wow. So you, it just didn't seem like it was in, like going to happen. That, that's amazing. You, you taught yourself so much through that. I mean, I feel like that's part of, of growing that you really... Um, Everybody gets a little bit of taste of that, but for, you, but for you to understand it so well and have that be your inspiration for moving yeah. forward is amazing. There's got to be a lot of mental strength to the physicality of what you do. Yeah, definitely. And, and boxing, no matter how many limbs you have, uh, is a lot more mental energy than people think because it's one thing to, to work through that and to work through a workout in general can be difficult, but then um, understanding the movements that there are and how to react when someone's throwing something at you and not to panic and just, just handle those situations and um, remember the rep repetition that you've learned and just trust your body to know what it's doing. Um, so that alone is a whole, like, I, I don't compete or anything, but in the training that I have done, I've just gotten a microscopic glimpse into, into what it entails. And it's given me so much respect for people that do do that professionally. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's, you know, that carries into more than just boxing and more than working out. I think half of working out for me is like gaining mental fortitude for other aspects of my life. Cause it's the same mental process. Um, it just either tangible or intangible. So in all this, we, uh, we, we've been like focusing on this hashtag I fight for. And so how, what, what comes to mind when you see, when you see those words or think of those words I fight for? I don't know if there's a specific slogan that comes to immediately comes to mind. I fight for, I fight for myself, honestly, as, and I, and that can come across as selfish, but uh, I think the, the action of learning boxing and, and then the idea of fighting for something uh, has taught me, like, I don't have to lie down and accept that I was born with one leg and that I can put myself in this box. I, that was the biggest lesson for me to learn. I was putting myself in a box of what I could or could not do and assuming that it was outside factors. When really, I have the ability to push outside of that box and to fight for what I wanna do and not accept things as the status quo. So it's, it's hard, it's a lot harder for me in some ways to become physically active because it takes a lot of energy and there's some, you know, obviously extra things that come with having a prosthesis, but um, I just realized that I do, I fight for myself and um, fight for, um, living life to the fullest um, in a way that I didn't think that I could do before. 
Oh, I love that so much. I mean, the question, like, I had to really think about it too. And I think every day it changes probably for all of us. Like, what do you fight for today is different than what you, you know, thought what, what was on the top of your brain yesterday. But for me, it's, it's similar in the way that it's, you know, you do have, as a person, I've had my own issues with confidence and I hate confrontation and I avoid it at all costs and things like that. And I've had to learn as I've gotten, as I've aged, you know, to fight for myself in certain ways too. And I think we all do. So do you have any music that you, what's your favorite music to, I know this is another tough question because this changes all the time too, but like music wise, what's your to go playlist? Uh, my to go playlist. Um, I don't know if I have a specific genre. I, I tend to lean towards um, like independent rock, I would say, if I have to pick a genre. But what I tend to gravitate to musically is lyrics first. Yeah. Um, so I did, um, that is just always what grabs my attention. So one of my favorite go-to bands to listen to, their name is Colony House. But I remember hearing um, their album for the first time and their lyrics were so relatable to where I was in life that I, it was just like honest and raw and didn't leave me feeling depressed at the end of it. It left me feeling like, yeah, I can, okay, I can do this. Like they know what it's like, they know what people go through and they're doing it. And yeah. that can sound a little cheesy, but um, so musically, like that's what I tend to gravitate to. Um, that's why I, not to be cliche here, um, but I, I first heard your music in 2016 and when you released Bring the Rifle uh -huh. uh, and your song Humble and Kind, um, that like, that song played a very big part of my life that year of just like those uh -huh. lyrics. So that's, um, I, before I moved to Nashville, I didn't listen to country music a lot. And so that was like even a, a journey for me to come here and, and mm -hmm. find different artists and writers and what I really loved listening to. Mm -hmm. Um, and songs like Humble and Kind um, that I enjoyed listening to musically, but also like the words, I could remember those and hold on to those in some really dark days. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, I'm lyric, that's how I, I'm drawn to music too. That very rarely I'll like some music that I don't know what they're, what they're singing. And I just love the, like, that's not as easy for me, but I'm yeah. lyric, I just had a kid walk in, what's up? Okay, check him. He's going on a run. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I'll let you go. I just wanted to tell you, like, literally, thank you for starring in my video. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. It really did, like, open up so much in my brain, and you guys made all of that happen. Like, you go in the studio with the song, and the band brings it to life, and it, like, makes your heart bigger for the song. And I've never had a video do this for a song, and you guys did that for me. So thank you so much.